Hello everyone. Good afternoon and a very warm welcome this uh, afternoon here. I have the pleasure of, can you hear me? Can you hear me okay? Closer, like this. I have the pleasure of being with all of you for the next 20 minutes to explore a very interesting subject, the subject of karma. I sometimes feel that people talk about karma as if it's like you're condemned to your karma. But what I find very interesting is that when I understand how the process of karma works, then actually I take responsibility for myself and my actions. This word actually in Hindi or in, in Sanskrit is pronounced karam. And the literal translation of the word karam is action. But because this whole um, philosophy, if you like, or the natural system of uh, action and their reaction works, we speak of the word karma as if it's a, it's a, it's a philosophy. But it is a natural state that is constantly at work in a sense that whatever it is that you create if you think about this your thoughts as a living energy which it really is because thoughts are a vibration thoughts are an energy and do you know that when you think something you might say that actually you're not doing anything you could be sitting in a room quietly by yourself presumably not doing anything, but the fact that you're thinking, feeling, experiencing anything of that nature. If you're thinking good thoughts, positive thoughts, beautiful thoughts, then you are generating positivity, goodness and beauty. Let me give you a practical example about this. If you are thinking about someone that you like, what it is that you like about them, why it is that you like them, then whether you know it or not, and whether you accept it or not, or you believe it or not, your thoughts and your attitude and your feelings of that person reaches that person. They reach them, but also not only do they reach them, but they actually respond to you in the same way. Because what really happens is that we as human beings, as human spirits, because really the philosophy of karma is a spiritual concept. Whether you believe that you're a sp spiritual being or not, it doesn't matter. But the process is still at work in the same way. And so as a spiritual being, that means as a conscient, living, thinking energy, whatever it is you think and feel and experience, you create the same energy around you. And anything that comes to you is going to come through the filter of what you are creating. Make sense? You know, if I'm creative, posi creating positive energy, because I'm thinking positive, I'm feeling positive. Even if you say, oh, I don't like the look of her, I'm not quite sure if I agree with what she's saying, that is not going to have an effect on me because I am focused in thinking and feeling positive things, positive feelings, positive thoughts. And in actual fact, even if you think something negative about me, then I, the natural process of my thinking and my feeling and attitude will work such that it will transforming it into something else and I will say, wow, what a lovely girl. I like her actually. But not necessarily for anything else, but that's my process of work. And to go back to the example that I was giving you earlier on, if you think something about someone, then they are going to feel that and they will respond in the same way to you. You know, so often we, and the example that's actually very good, when you like a person, it's not so difficult. And they like you back, 
it works fine. But you know, when you don't like someone, for example, or you kind of have a little bit of a thing with someone, and that little bit of a thing that you have with them, it automatically reaches them. And they also then behave in the same way with you. And you might not accept, you might not, you might turn around and say, well, I don't know why she's doing that to me. Why is she behaving like that with me? I haven't said anything. I haven't done anything. Well, you haven't said anything. You haven't done anything, but you've thought it. And because you've thought it, that vibration and that energy reaches. I'm really starting from a very basic and a fundamental point here, but it's extremely subtle. Do you see what, I'm, what I mean? It's extremely subtle. When they behave badly with you, you turn around and say, well, I don't know what I did. I didn't do anything, but you did. You started it, probably, initially, and then when they respond in the same way, you're completely baffled and puzzled by it. Because you consider doing as speaking or reacting in a certain way only. And this is where this whole notion of fate or destiny uh, comes from. And again, when people speak about destiny, they think, oh, I can't do anything about anything. It's like it's destined for, for me to happen. But the reality is, when did anybody say to you that something is going to happen and you accept that it's going to happen? You know, think about it. I'm, going, I'm packing a lot in here because we have a chance to talk about it afterwards. I'm packing a lot here because I've only got 20 minutes. And so the, this idea that, that you know, if, if destiny or fate is something I can't do anything about, then actually I, it, it's personally for me, it's as if I don't take responsibility. But every time you think about it, whatever is happening, however it's happening, think about time as that which was, which is past, was one day present. What is present is in a little while going to become the past. S sorry, <clears throat> excuse me, past, present and future, they're not so kind of confined to time and space. What I'm trying to say is that it's actually all in a, in a straight line. So past has happened, it's finished, and you will say, well, okay, it happened. And you don't think about it in this way, but actually whatever happens in the past is finished. There really is nothing you can do about your past, right? It's finished. It is finished. Is it finished or not? No? Where, does it, where is it not finished? If it's not finished, it's finished up here. If it, it's not finished up here. And this is a very interesting aspect to remember. Whatever has happened in the past is not going to repeat in the same way that it has happened. The only place where it keeps repeating is in your own head. And when it keeps repeating in the same way in your own head, then actually there is nothing you can do about it. And you will not do anything about it because you keep thinking about it and chewing it and actually make it stronger and more powerful. But there is something that you can do about something and that is only this present moment in time. And there is nothing that you know about your future, nothing that you can do about your future consciously in that way. You can't suddenly decide that this is going to happen or that's going to happen in a sense. But what you can do is you can choose your present knowing that you can affect your future. Because our future is created through our present. If I use my present in the right way, then I'm able to transform my future and can do something about it. And so in one sense, what I'm, I'm contradicting myself when I say nothing I can do. I can't do anything about it just by thinking about it. I can do something about my future. If I want my future, let's say for instance, if my, I want to be healthy in the future, what will I do? I will take care of my body presently. 
I will eat well, I will exercise well, I will sleep well, I will, I will have a healthy lifestyle. Then I know that tomorrow and the day after, my body is going to be well. If I don't take care of my health, if I don't do what I feel I need to do, or I know what I ought to do, then I can't be responsible. I'm not being responsible for, for my future. And so this whole notion, this whole aspect of fate and destiny, there isn't anybody sitting up there writing a little book about my future and my destiny. There is only one person writing my fate, my destiny and my future. And that is me. And, and we can do that by actually realizing the power of our actions. But the power of our action from the moment I have a thought. As I said, actions is not just doing something. Actions is thinking. Actions is seeing. But seeing not just as in looking in a physical sense, but how am I seeing? Am I looking with the eyes of compassion, with the eyes of love, the eyes of appreciation, or am I looking with the eyes of criticism, negativity, comparison, or competition? If I look through the eyes of all of those things, then what's going to happen? I am going to live my life on the basis of comparison, competition, jealousy, dislike, and displeasure. And if I'm creating those kinds of attitudes and behaviors and interactions, then I'm only perpetuating what I am creating. Because I will create, somebody else will respond in the same way to me, and I will respond back in the same way. So then you might say to me, well, okay, well, what do I do about this? How do I change the quality of my thinking? and therefore, ultimately, my actions. Because the seed of all actions is thought. You know, even if you think about something very simple as coming here, you didn't just wake up and suddenly end up here. Your feet didn't just bring you here. You saw something, that informed you about this, then you thought, we probably saw it once or twice or three times and then somebody probably told you about it and maybe even somebody pushed you a little bit to bring you along with them. You actually then still had to make the choice of getting here. You make the choice of getting here. And when you make that choice, then you actually come into action. So even the seed of our actions is our thoughts. So it's a question of realizing the power of our thoughts on the basis of what I have around me. Just to give you another example of the quality of our thinking, sometimes we do something and we experience the consequences immediately. You know? Even a little depressive thought that I might have, for instance, about myself. I was feeling perfectly fine, or somebody says something to me and says, oh, you know, something that affects me emotionally, I become upset about it. I think about it over and over again in my head, and I become upset. I think about it over and over again, and I become upset. And the result of those actions or, or that thought is instantaneous. Instant. I have a negative thought and I immediately feel bad. I immediately feel negative. Instant results. Then there are some actions that we engage ourselves in over a long period of time. And then it's those actions that actually bring us the results of what we're doing. The example that I find a very interesting one is, let's say, something like smoking. It's a good job that it's not so fashionable to smoke anymore, but I'm sure that you identify with the example. We're not born with a cigarette in our mouth, are we? Anybody born with a cigarette in their mouth? I don't think so. But we see and we kind of think, hmm, looks like an interesting practice. Well, this, this smoke coming out, it looks like fun. So you try it. 
you have it once you have it again before you know it you've created a habit for yourself it's so much so that you end up saying oh but this is me everybody else identifies you with a habit that you've created but not only that and it it has an effect on your body you know that nicotine is bad for you but for the pleasure of smoking you continue to smoke you then actually what you're doing in the process is abusing your body and when in time your lungs give up your throat gives up then you end up saying well you know what happened you end up you abused your body and this is what man has done today to the elements of nature you know we complain about our environment we complain about the ozone layer we complain about what's happening who made it who created all of us collectively it's not that i'm just responsible for what happens to me but i actually become responsible for everything because i am constantly generating i'm constantly creating and what i create has an effect on others and other things around me because we are actually a very powerful energy thinking feeling is a very very powerful energy because it infiltrates everything and it affects everything whether i want to aff- want it to affect others or not that is the law of karma and so basically what it boils down to because of this is that as you sow so shall you reap simple if you sow an apple tree seed you can't expect when the tree is grown and is producing apples and you see other people appreciating mangoes and you think i love those mangoes i want this tree to grow mangoes possible uh uh-uh. uh you sowed the seed of um an apple tree the only thing you can expect is an apple or apples and not only remember if you sow one seed of an apple tree how many apples does that tree produce abundance of apples and so many others are actually reaping the fruit of your seed of action and so you can just see that even if i have only one thought that one thought affects a lot of other things and so really karma is not being condemned to what's happening to me i see today this is what i ha- what is happening to me and i say okay so i am the creator of the tree of my life as it is today however today i have a choice i have a choice to actually continue what i have continued until now or i say i stop and i change and then there's a whole way of looking and a way of um working with yourself in such a way that you change your consciousness you change your consciousness on the basis of what anthony was talking about maybe some of you didn't attend that talk but am i living my life on the basis of what's happening outside of me or am i aware that what i create outside of me is on the basis of what's happening inside of me and so changing my lifestyle changing the way in which i think and feel and experience knowing that actually my basic nature is the nature of peace of the nature of love of the nature of truth actually the human spirit is the essence of truth but it's when we deny ourselves that truth when i am peace i am truth when i am love i am truth when i am happy i am truth when i move away from truth then i'm living a life of falsehood deception and cheat the only thing that i can expect out of that is deception cheat and lying thank you